before we use all four methods to solve a quadratic equation. So let's review from yesterday. What's the, what would C be for this one to make a perfect square trinomial? Four. Four. Right? Because you take negative four, you divide it by two, and you square it, right? Yeah. What about this one? One, because you take two, divide by two, and square it. What about this one? One fourth. Because you take one, divide it by two, and square it. Correct? Is one fourth? What would this perfect square be? X minus what? Two squared? What would this one be? X plus one squared? Isn't it just what's inside of here? Because you're talking about two squares, right? This is really two squared, and this is really, I guess I didn't have to erase that one, one squared, and isn't this one really one half squared? So it would be x plus one half squared. What about this one? Right? Because you take negative 3 and cut it in half and square it. So what would be my perfect square trinomial? X minus what? 3 over 2. 3 over 2 squared. Right? I said whatever's inside of here. I wouldn't write this negative 4 over 2. I'd write it negative 2, right? And this one, I wouldn't write 2 over 2 there. I'd write 1. But this one. This one doesn't have a coefficient of 1. So let's make it. x squared minus 1 half x plus blank. Hmm. Who said it? Good job. How'd you get 1 16th? Half, half, is, half of a half is usually written like this, right? Half of a half squared, which is negative one-fourth squared, which is one-sixteenth. So what would be my perfect square? X minus what? One-fourth squared. Good. Good job. Not fun. Right? But can you see where it follow how it's going? So I wouldn't want to do that blindly. That's why we're going to do this. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to factor it first. Then I'm going to use the quadratic formula and see if I get the same root. Then I'm going to graph it. Then I'm going to complete the square. Alright? So let me hand out this to you. Alright, so I think we should start with factoring. So x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0. That factors out nicely because there's no leading coefficient. So I have x times x. What times what makes negative 18? 6 and 3. Which one's going to be negative? The 6. Because my 3 is negative right here. If you can't do that, what should you do? No. no. Be nice. Well, come after school or use what? You could use an X box for that, right? All right, let's solve it. So X minus 6 equals 0, and X plus 3 equals 0. X equals 6. X equals negative 3. There are the solutions to this quadratic equation. I'm going to shift over to graphing. Well, let's do quadratic formula first, yeah? yeah? That's pretty easy. So what's my A? And my B? And my C? Negative 18. So X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. 
my B is negative 3, so I'm going to put in negative 3, negative 3. A is 1, so that goes here, and negative 18. All right. So if I further simplify, I get x equals positive 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 4 times 18 is 72. I didn't do that in my head. I've done it. This is my third time today, right? x equals 3 plus the square root of 81 over 2, and x equals 3 minus the square root of 81 over 2. With me so far? So x equals 3 plus 9 over 2, and x equals 3 minus 9 over 2. 12 over 2 is 6. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Does it match? It sure does. You know what I mean by you're going to be able to double check with every single one of them? So you guys finish writing that. Let's move on to graphing. All right, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I already know my roots, right? My roots are 6 and negative 3. Let's prove it by graphing. So 6 and negative 3. How would I find my axis of symmetry? It is the middle of it, which is also right here in the quadratic formula, right? Negative b over 2a. So negative b would be negative negative 3 over 2 times 1, which is 3 halves. Well, that's not very pretty. How much is 3 halves? One and a half. One and a half. Does that look like it's in the middle? It is. Now for the fun part. How do I find my vertex? I plug that in. Don't I plug in 3 halves and I find my y? This should be a lot of fun. So 3 halves squared minus 3 times 3 halves minus 18. What's this? 3 halves squared. 9 fourths minus 9 halves. My, I'm going to stop there. I don't want it to be 9 halves because I want it to be fourths. What would be an equivalent fraction to 9 halves? 18 fourths. 18 fourths. Good job, you guys. 18 fourths. So I need 18 to be fours too. Hmm, how do I know that? Look here. Isn't it four times negative 18? Seen any correlations there yet? These numbers are looking exactly like these numbers here. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Watch me keep doing this. So 9 minus 18 is negative 9 fourths minus 72 fourths. What's negative 9 and negative 72? 80. Negative 81. Check that out. Look what's under there. Is it scaring you? So this is negative 18, sorry, 81 fourth, which is negative 20 and 1 fourth. Hmm, let's see if that makes sense. My vertex is negative 20 and 1 fourth, or negative 20.25. I'll be way down here. How can I check to make sure that makes sense? Look at this. 
What does this equation tell me? Negative 18 is my y-intercept. Would that make sense? It does. You don't have to graph it like that. You could just do this. Stop. Right? Now, would graphing be an appropriate method to solve this? No. Right? If you were to graph it blindly, you would get the fact that the vertex was way down here. And then I guess you could guess and check going away from the axis of symmetry until you came all the way out, but you'd be guessing for a while. Right? So, not really a good way. But we had a little assistance because we already knew our roots. Correct? All right, finally, let's complete the square. It's going to be the most complicated one, right? Okay, so I'd already ca I can already see that this is not a perfect square. So I've got to move negative 18 over. So I have x squared minus 3x plus my new c is going to be equal to 18 plus my new c. Let's find c. I would take negative 3, cut it in half, and square it, right? Which would give me 9 fourths. Nine fourths. Huh, look at that. There's 9 fourths over there. We can't recycle, really. Huh, the same problem done four different ways and you get some of the same numbers. How could that be? So what's my perfect square? X minus what? Three halves squared equals, huh, but 18, I need that to be a denominator of four. Where can I find that? 72 over four. Good job plus 9 fourths, which is going to end up being 81 fourths. Huh, that's got the same number there, too. Wonder where that came from. Seriously, though, right? Isn't that cool how they all correlate? It all comes together? When you start getting these numbers, you should be saying to yourself, I must be doing something right because these numbers are matching, right? Now... I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which really isn't that big of a deal. Because it's 9 over 2, right? Because it's x minus 3 halves equals 9 halves. Plus or minus. Right? This is plus or minus. So I have two different roots. x minus 3 halves equals positive 9 halves. And x minus 3 halves equals negative 9 halves. When I add 3 halves to both sides, don't I get 12 halves? Which is the same thing I got right here. 12 halves, which is 6. And when I add 3 halves to negative 9 halves, don't I get negative 6 halves, just like I got over here on this side? Which is negative 3. So we did all that work and it was the same so we're pretty sure now after four times that we did it right, right? <laughs> Right. Okay. There's actually one more. All right. So the good news is that this is all I have for you for your homework. You have four problems that you have to do four different methods, which is 16 problems, which I just did four of them, so you only have 12 left. Okay. Or here's the here's the alternate assignment. You do this, and I get a few people that aren't working in class, and I just decide we're just going to go to the book. So are you all going to get to work? Yeah. All right. So why don't you guys get to work on the next one? I would start with factoring. Sure. Okay. You, I can go back and do it. So, guys, what's your first step of factoring? Greatest common factor. So what would I do with this? Take out a negative 3. Okay, you guys. Happy working. I'll come back and do the graph with you in a minute, okay? All right, so let's sum it up. What did we learn today? All four methods together. Why would we complete the square? Why in the world would we complete the square?
to solve for x, but why would we do it? Why would you pick completing the square? Think about it. But why would you choose completing the square over, let's say, factoring? I like completing the square because I can visualize it. I can see the square forming. No, you can't. You like quadratic formula, you feel kind of blind doing it. Factoring, you can see a little bit more. Okay, there's always a reason. All right, so the person next to you is asking, how would you explain the steps to completing the square? You tell them to what? Move the one, move the constant over, right? Then what? Divide by b by two and square it. Then add to each side. Then factor. Square root both sides. And solve. Good job. All right, on your assignment sheet, my favorite method for solving a quadratic equation is because. What's your favorite method? You all have your own reason. Okay, good job, guys. Let's go over the next one next.